All right, everyone, welcome to Atlanta. Uh, this is the garage that uh, we put together. We designed this garage with the owner, John, uh, here in uh, the Atlanta area. It's uh, 5,000 square feet, so it's 50 feet deep. It's 100 feet wide. Uh, I guess it's a little more than 5,000 square feet because we have an upstairs office, and I'm gonna show you one of the big changes that's happened in this place. It's really cool, we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but I wanted to take you through uh, this garage, just update you things that we did here this weekend that we've been here. Uh, and uh, I also wanna point you back to make sure to go check out the whole video series. We shot this, and what I think is one of the best things we've ever ever done, both design, install, and you know, video-wise. So make sure to go check out that whole series. We'll link it in the description. So go check out the playlist if you wanna watch the whole construction of this if you're new here. So one of the biggest changes to this place are these suckers. So this is a Rytec high-speed roll-up system. Yeah, that's the freaking coolest thing in the world. First time I saw these was in, uh, was in uh, Driver's Club uh, out in Seattle. So I can't take credit for discovering this, uh, but these are high speed roll up doors. Uh, what we had to do here, Mike's a freaking genius. The Rytec installation team, you know, with the Swiss tracks, they'd never encountered that before. Uh, and so Mike ordered these eight foot sections of Delrin and then made a stop so that the doors would seal up nicely. Uh, I don't know what the time upward uh, or, or time is for these to go up, but the spiral is how, so how they go so fast that these tracks or the doors never touch itself in the track. And so when it goes up, it reminds me of some sort of high speed roller coaster where it goes down a little slower so that way it doesn't kill anybody. But you know, it's 96 degrees, 95 degrees out here today in Atlanta. so. Uh, having to deal with the heat, you want your doors to be able to close quickly and go up quickly. Now, I believe these are about, I think they're about $40,000 a piece. So, um, you know, we decided it didn't make sense to do a, a, a Rytec on this big 20 foot door here. So this is a 20 by 20 uh, in case, I don't know that it really matters, but in case this garage starts to fill up, um, we didn't want to get any mist if you're deconning a car here in the wash bay. There is a new overhead door um, that this, was, this wasn't installed last time we were here. So Rytec also here in the wash bay area. Uh, so this one operates the same. That never gets old. I do that all darn day. It's the coolest thing ever. So uh, we also in the wash bay here changed and updated. We added the timbre doors. I got the bucket filler, which we didn't have last time, and we actually removed, so we left the boom in case we can figure out a way to modify, but we removed the Mosmatic drying system. Mosmatic has this amazing drying, it's like basically two baby leaf blowers, but it's just underwhelming. It doesn't create enough, enough, you know, I guess, back pressure in order to really blow off the car the way I want it. So we removed the system. I left the boom up there so that way we could, um, we could maybe, Mike and I are gonna go start and do some bench testing and maybe we'll bring it back. Uh, but the holster here, which actually turned into a good holster for our Acura One for filling tires, uh, but the holster here was for our, you know, for our Mosmatic drying system, which we'll remove. This garage has, uh, you know, again, well over 5,000 square feet of, uh, of Swiss tracks. Right here is a, is a galvanized slot drain. So I think it's a, I forget how many, I want to say it's a, like an 18 foot slot drain. So the floor is pitched. So that way all the water runs and is taken care of, runs down the drain. There's actually a backflow here. Uh, so we can turn some, some backflow on just to, you know, if you needed to clean out the drain, if you're cleaning some dirty vehicles in here. Uh, they don't clean the farm equipment and stuff like that in here, but you know, sometimes a car or truck will be a little dirtier than normal. So they use this wash bay for that. I actually just Custom ordered, my dad made me some custom hoses. These are five feet or four foot, eight too long. Um, and so I ordered some 20 foot. We now can custom make hoses. Uh, and so these will be swapped uh, tomorrow. The uh, groundskeeper will come out and uh, Brian will come and swap those for us. But we have the OG Spec Mosmatic set up here. Uh, so this little whip we have will be removed. If your hose is too long, the hose will have a tendency to want to smack the side of the car. Uh, well, these were just a prefab 25 foot hose that we put when we originally installed. I wanted to come here and remeasure because I'd written it down, but at my measurement I wasn't too uh, wasn't too excited about. So I wanted to remeasure so we get the exact accurate uh, version. We have two Mosmatic, mosmatic uh, Z booms, both 
for, you know, for water. The goal long term is when we, when we do a foaming system that one of these would be a foaming lance and the other would be a, you know, just regular washing lance. So we'll, we'll, we'll transition to that in the future, hopefully at some point. Uh, this also has the um, hide hose system. So on both sides of the pillars here, you have the, um, we have, uh, I think, a modern day uh, vacuum cleaner. And then we have this, this, uh, this system where you turn the vacuum on, the hose comes all the way out. What's going on here? There we go. Oh, yeah. So much suction. So the cool thing about these, Nick Jones taught us about these things. But the hide hose system goes up into a PVC, so I want to say we have a 35 foot hose. You turn the thing on. It disappears into the wall. Don't hit the thing in your pocket because it'll open the door. So then we have uh, Cox hose reels here, as well as Cox hose reels up in the uh, on the pillars. These we've done before, uh, and then the wash bay has a uh, custom setup I did. Uh, so these are Dynaudio OW8s, and then Dynaudio in-wall subwoofers, uh, and they're powered by a NAD uh, Master Series M10. Uh, so this is an awesome little two-channel setup with some in-wall subwoofers. I didn't want any subwoofers on the floor uh, because you're going to be getting overspray and water in here. And I thought it made sense to do some outdoor speakers, but I did some tuning on this system. It really does rip pretty nicely. This was uh, Kyle's design idea. I think it's pretty, pretty genius. Him and, him and John came up with this, where this is all curdy and tile. Um, so this is all, you know, vapor, vapor resistant, I guess you could say. Uh, so we tiled up to 10 feet in this whole this whole wash bay, uh, and then putting in this uh, this sort of thick pane glass, so you could see in the mechanical area. Again, eventually we're going to have a soap distribution system, and then we'll have uh, the Mosmatic drying if we you know if we we get that going. But that we have room to to house our equipment, but still still see it. Uh, those cabinets that we put in the Tambrador cabinets we put in there for washing towels and things like that. And then this is for our overflow for uh, gallons, you know, gallons of detailing stuff. This whole place is controlled by Lutron Homeworks, which we didn't do. Um, John's uh, AV guy did all that. And then we have our uh, setup here. So uh, wireless internet is all done by Arcanist. Arcanist distribution, router, and then my M10, and then audio control amplifiers in here for the, for the, for the subwoofer. There's the uh, modern day, the silent master. That's the central back system. And then we pulled this out. We had this all tied up, but we're actually going to add another hose reel uh, to the outside for doing the farm equipment. So we're going to actually put a valve in here and run this up and over and then out the sidewall here for, for use there uh, outside. Speed Queens, this is key for washing towels. You need washer and dryers that use water. So we have Speed Queen set up. And then this whole place is done by Daikin. This is a Daikin pancake uh, ductless system. And then there are three giant Ultra Air 50 pint. I think those might be 75 pint um, uh, dehumidifiers for, to keep this place humidity controlled, both for washing, but just because we're in Atlanta and it's pretty humid. And then in here, since last time I was here, cars have changed. There was only one M5 in here. Uh, and so you have, uh, I actually shot a video, just me giving you my take, walk, walk through the cars. Uh, uh, Lime Rock with 10,000 miles, a couple of 458s, a 900 mile GT2 RS, a 58 mile 911R, uh, and then a couple of M cars, uh, an E46 and e, uh, E39 M5. Uh, but the concept here would be to have this fully mechanical as well as, uh, as well as detailing capable. I have hose reels on all four corners, which was something I, I don't know that I made it up, but I dreamt up this idea. I'd love to have power and air on all four corners of the lift. This is a jumbo 9,000. So this is a 9,000 pound lift that Mike uh, fabricated and put the control unit inside of a sonic cabinet. This lift will get the car up about 78 inches, so a few inches over my head. But tell me this isn't a freaking dream. <laughs> oh, this is so smooth. I want the, uh, we did this in custom galvanized and black. 
uh, and then um, John had his painter paint the floor black, but you know Mike ended up having to modify and level this and um, this uh, we have a whole video just on this lift installation. But tell me this isn't the coolest thing in the world. I'm a huge fan of scissor lifts. This one is even smoother. And so we have, I think, 26 feet at the peak in this building. So we have you know, plenty of room to get a car or a truck as high as you want. I could go up a, a little further. And so then in here, what's changed since last time you saw the videos, if you've been following along, is I added uppers. So uppers all along here. We also added a sink and added a side closet, side cabinet which his uh, detailer, Tom, who I trained, um, has kind of set this up. I wanted this for Milwaukee, but you know he's gonna be the one working here, so uh, our Milwaukee stuff is here. Uh, there's a few more tools that are coming to complete the master collection, but we have Milwaukee tools, uh, and then the, you know, the awesome recycling bin, which is really just for towels, microfiber towels is what we use this for, but you could use this for trash and recycling. And then this is the most amazing thing ever. I love this so much. And then this is a little different. Kyle likes to do this in his designs where, <coughs> excuse me, this, uh, we swap this out for the full XD version. So this is the double deep version so we can fit our tools. And so the concept here would be you can roll this out. Actually, this is loaded up with, I don't know, a thousand pounds of tools, but I, but I can roll this out I can roll this out and work on the front or the back of the car, you know, depending on how I wanted to. And then the cool thing about this rolling, not only is it super smooth, the casters are awesome, but it stows exactly back where you left it. So there's little rollers, roller balls on the side here where you can roll it back in place. And then there's stops in the back where it sits in the same spot every time I put my locks and then I have a nice solid cabinet. And then if I wanted to, I could remove the toolbox and use this as a desk. And so we left this corner for upper you know, working area. Some of the things we have coming, we'll do some under cabinet lighting in my next go around here. Uh, but I think this cabinet array, it looks so much more complete now that we have the sink. I didn't want to just get any old faucet so the plumber's coming in the next week or so. We, had to, we ordered, a, uh, a, uh, I think, a Newport brass uh, and um, a faucet. And so those are back orders, so we're waiting for that to come in. So one of the neatest things about this place is you can come in, drive, turn around a car, uh, and have room to spare. Uh, if John does really get into collecting and start, you know, start getting a, a number of cars, what we'll probably do is we'll do auto stackers. We could even do triple stackers in the middle. Um, what we would probably do uh, the Benpack auto stacker system where you would use, use it as parking lifts because all your work would go over here. There's also future need if we needed to put a two post in or something like that, we could always do that. And then this is my favorite cabinet array, which is right centered, right on the middle of the, of the room. Uh, so we have a 77 Sony OLED and then Dynaudio Core 59s in here. We have a NAD C685 preamp. Uh, the NAD is what, what um, provides the you know, signal. There's also an Apple TV in here, Apple TV 4K, uh, and then a Dynaudio Core sub. Uh, these just came, so we installed these this week. There isn't anything in them, um, but uh, these drawers have uh, my Milwaukee Accessory Master Collection. Next time I come back, I'm gonna bring some tool grid and tool grid this out because right now, I kind of have it gently sitting in the drawer. <laughs> Um, this is one of you know four drawers of the Milwaukee Accessory Master Collection that I put together. Uh, and then we have microfiber towels everywhere. Or we have towels. I think how many hours did I spend folding last time I was here, Mike? At least, at least two or three hours folding last time I was here. Uh, and so Mike terminated this. We needed to cut the drywall, reinforce it, and put some backing in. Uh, and so we added these reels uh, for service to the cars if necessary. Uh, so this uh, this will reach all the way to roughly the M5. Uh, and so this area we had pre-run. We'd ran out of piping last time we were here, and so we knew we were coming back. Uh, and so Mike put this project so come you know half a day or so to finish up this this part of, of the garage here. I'm telling you this, go, go check out the video. I'll show you a little bit about this car. This is the car that I want. 
it's like a million bucks now, though. That's 906 miles. I don't like GT2s, but something about that guard red, guards red is awesome. We also got another closet, which we had ordered, which just it came, so I just added it to that. We lost our symmetry there, but that's more overflow. What he's gonna use that for are pending modification parts. So like when you get grills and gills and exhaust parts and suspension things, so that's what that cabinet array is there for. It's really there just to kind of break up the wall, but you know, this isn't like the what you need garage, this is the what you want garage. So I think that's important to denote. There's securities, there's a lawn security throughout the thing. They actually redid these stairs, um, so the stairs were redone, repainted, uh, and uh, they weren't they weren't super sturdy last summer here, so they had to refinish and recut the Swiss tracks. Up here is our desk system that we're going to be launching here. I'm sure in the next year, where we'll be doing our custom uh, Blue Tree tops with a Dynaudio, and you know this is a Mac a MacBook Pro setup with uh, Yellowtech, uh, stuff, Yellowtech Mika. So I'm hoping, hoping to become a dealer and set up for that. And then we'll put some GIK acoustic panels in here. Actually, I didn't, you know, John, John had his, his guys put those in. There's a couple more to mount. And then this is new. This is pretty insane. So this is a SimCraft. It's eight feet long, seven feet wide, seven feet tall. These are 129.9 is what this costs, and it's like a surreal experience of um, amazingness. I got a little motion sick though, uh, but it's full. I think it's full. I don't know if it's Dolby 5.1 surround. I think it's 4.1 surround. Um, there's fans overhead that blow and keep you cool. There's steering wheel feedback. It's pretty insane. It also serves as a flight simulator as well. Um, this can be used for actual track certification for getting various licenses on tracks, getting your you know, advanced certification, things like that. Um, I'm thinking about the thing that interests me on this is you know, our, in our, our destination OG properties, maybe we put these in as a, another cool factor thing if we were ever fortunate enough to uh, you know, forego buying a GT4 and getting a SimCraft, that would be pretty sweet. So that, that thing is a really neat addition to the garage since we've last been here. So that's it, no biggie. Rytec door, SimCraft, uh, finished sauna cabinets, a couple of million dollar cars, and you got yourself pretty much everybody's dream, certainly is mine. And this is just a little tidbit of the property. We're on 330 acres, I believe, um, 178 of it for this part of the property. There's a guest house we've been staying in. There's a, you know, the main house where the family lives. And then there's, um, there's creeks, there's a man-made lake, there's uh, trails for dirt biking. It's, it's really incredible. In rural Atlanta, it's, and we're 10 minutes from the airport. Pretty, pretty sweet. So that's a wrap for now on the Atlanta Garage. I feel pretty good about it. Uh, we need to bring, uh, I'll probably have another little quick third phase of some other things that I wanna, I wanna put in here. Uh, so I'm sure I'll stop by at some point. Um, I'd love to get John to, to interview, to do an interview inside the hex uh, and uh, share that with, uh, you know, not the public, but with, uh, with our hex membership. Um, it's, uh, there's a certain feeling like me and Mike Awaba and Mike Figuer that, that have been here and we're, we're here for this whole project. There's just a certain, there's like a, a smell and a feel, like a certain place that this garage holds in my existence, in my, in my life. And um, I know, certainly know John appreciates it and I, I appreciate the opportunity that he's given us to, to build this thing. Uh, and put all this cool stuff in one place. And I can't imagine the, the remaining cool things we're gonna find as the years go on, but this, uh, this is pretty darn cool. So that's a wrap for now. Uh, I'll be back to do some more stuff, I'm sure, in the next few months. And uh, we should continue to share your progress. I'd love to just come out here without having to do any work and just hang out, wash some cars, and maybe de detail something in here, do, some, do a suspension or something like that. That would be cool. So anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. And um, like I said, go check out the main series. You wanna see us putting this place together. 
Uh, the only thing uh, that is a little unfortunate, I don't have any footage of them installing the Rytec doors. From what I understand, it wasn't a simple process. It was a kind of a cluster. Rytec doors aren't sold for residential applications very often, often but yeah, this has been a, a surreal experience and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next big project. I've got another one lined up that's gonna be similar to this, different but similar in, uh, in Los Angeles that we'll be doing probably next year. Thanks for being a part of this and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. We'll see you soon.